All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to do one of my favorite proofs in linear algebra. Namely, I can give you a very easy criterion to determine when two vector spaces are isomorphic. In other words, when do they have the same shape? So just recall, in case you don't know, definition, two vector spaces V and W are isomorphic if and only if there exists a linear transformation between them that's one to one and onto. Uh, there exists T from V to W, uh, linear, basically invertible, right? One to one and onto. So again, just a picture, we have V and W, and there's a linear transformation T from V to W. For example, uh, the space, let's say, of two by two matrices and R4 are isomorphic. So usually you write this equal with a similar because you can just have T take A, B, C, D as its input and just spits out the vector A, B, C, D. But for example, if you take R2, it's not isomorphic to R3. Because basically a plane can never have the same shape as uh, the whole uh, R3 space. Otherwise we would actually just live in two dimensions basically. But the mathematical reason is, turns out there's no onto linear transformation from R2 to R3. So you cannot fill R3 with just R2 using just linear transformations. Now, in theory, it's hard to show something is iso two things are isomorphic because uh, you would have to give me an explicit linear transformation between them with those three two properties. Uh, but it turns out there's a much easier criterion to determine if two things are isomorphic because notice, the dimension of M2 by 2 is 4, and that matches the dimension of R4. Similarly here, the dimension of R2 does not match the dimension of R3. So it turns out a very easy criteria to determine if two vector spaces are isomorphic. It's just count the dimensions. If the dimensions are the same, then they're isomorphic. If not, then they're not isomorphic. So here's a theorem I will prove today. So it, we'll just do it for finite dimensional vector spaces. And I'm not 100% sure if it's true for infinite dimensional ones, but I have a hunch that yes, if their bases have the same cardinalities. So theorem, if dimensional, so V and W, Again, finite dimensional vector spaces are isomorphic are isomorphic. Isomorphic. It's terrific. Isomorphic. If and only if dimension of V equals dimension of W. And in fact, let me show that. And I it's one of my Favorite proofs because it has sort of everything you need to know about linear algebra. So suppose for let's show first of all that it's a necessity. So suppose V and W are isomorphic. If V and W are isomorphic, then we know that there exists a linear transformation from V to W, linear, and then one to one and on to. Now, uh, because we have one to one and on to, it turns out there's this nice theorem that makes this work. It's what's called the rank nullity theorem or the dimension theorem some books use. So by rank nullity, and you'll see in a second why we need that. We have that. Uh, um, no, 
what does it say? It says that sort of the null space and the range of your linear transformation, they um, have to balance out. So dimension of the null space of T plus the rank of T, which is the dimension of the range of T, equals to the dimension of the input space. And there's a wonderful proof about this that I've done in another video. But here then, it's very nice because look, um, if T is one to one, then the null space is zero, just a zero space. On the other hand, if T is on to, then the range is all of W. So we get dimension of W equals to the dimension of V. And the dimension of the zero space is zero, so this is zero, and therefore we get dimension of W equals dimension of V. Ta-da! So if the isomorphic, and again, the yeah, finite dimension, otherwise this theorem wouldn't hold, then we have that the dimension of V equals to the dimension of W. Now, let's show the other way. And by the way, you could do it, uh, um, sorry, um, you could do it with the contrapositive or something, because basically if uh, V is much smaller than W, then if there's such a thing, you could get, uh, uh, you would get basically that the null space is, let me think, uh, if V is smaller than W, no, the range wouldn't be all of W, because that dimension wouldn't be dimension of V. Or, but if, for example, uh, V is much bigger than W, then the null space wouldn't be zero. But I don't like that kind of reasoning. I prefer actually a direct argument. So it turns out if V and W would have the same dimension, then it turns out you can construct an explicit a linear transformation from V to W, that's one to one and onto. So, and let's do that. So suppose, suppose they're the same. So dimension of V equals to the dimension of W, then find, uh, one of find T. <laughs> w T F is one to find, T from V to W, that's one to one and onto. Okay, but here's the nice thing. Everything is finite dimensional and it has the same dimension. So in particular, let's find a basis, right? So we know there is a basis. So let V1, let's call this beta if you want. Beta is V1 up to Vn be a basis of V. V and let me label that. So I like to... Uh, label bases with squares, so V1 up to Vn, and W1 up to Wn be a basis, Wn be a basis for V. Oh, sorry, of W. Okay. So, again, squares, W1, dot, 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 Wn. And here's an important thing. Usually we say W1 up to Wm because the dimensions may not be the same. But the whole point is, since dimension of V equals dimension of W, we'll just do W1 up to Wn. And remember, the whole goal of this is to find a linear transformation between the, those two things. But remember, one of the beautiful things in linear algebra is, in order to define a linear transformation, you don't need to define it for every x. It's enough to specify t at the basis vectors. Then it turns out you can find a linear transformation in just one of them like that. And this is what I call the linear extension theorem. And there's another video on this where I prove this. So simply now define t from v to w by T of VI equals WI for all I. So T maps this basis vector to this basis vector, the second one to the second one, and the nth one to the nth one. 
And again, because V1 up to Vn is a basis, we actually know that there's exactly one linear transformation with this property. So we already know T is linear. That's what the theorem tells us. And now, well, we need to show it's one-to-one -one and onto, but remember, this is other theorem, and I'm not sure if I prove it or not, but it follows from the rank nullity theorem. It's enough to show just one of the two things. If both of them have the same dimension, then one-to-one -one is equivalent to onto. So, because we only need to show one of them, let's, for example, show it's onto, because it's actually easier. So, basically, let's show T is onto. But that's actually very easy because uh, what is the range of T? Well, it's T of every vector in V, right? So it's the set of T of X where X is in V. But here's a nice thing. It turns out to find a range. It turns out you don't need to find t of x for every x. It's enough to find t at the basis vectors and just take the span of it. So it turns out the range of t, it's span of t of v1, t of vn. And, well, by definition, that's the span of w1 up to wn. And so far, we didn't need the fact that this is a basis. It would have worked for anything, but because W1 up to Wn is a basis, it means this is W. So the range of T is all of W, but this is precisely what it means for T to be onto. And lastly, well, uh, um, because, again, by the rank nullity theorem and those two vector spaces have the same dimension, it follows that T is also one-to-one. -one. And we are done! So, I have shown, now officially, that if two vector spaces have the same dimension, then they're isomorphic and vice versa. All right, so I hope you like this linear algebra excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.